Hey guys, so I haven't vlogged in a while and I thought I'd start today because I've gone out and bought lots of new shiny products. So I decided I'm going to review them all in one video. And I'm going to be starting off with my MAC Studio Fix Fluid. I went and bought some more today because I'd almost run out and the shade I'm using at the moment is a little bit too dark for me because it's starting to come into winter now, my skin's getting paler. So today I've bought an NC37. And I'm just going to apply that to my wrist because I've got some eyeshadows to apply as well. So I can apply the eyeshadows on my wrist because I'm already wearing a full phase of makeup today. Put some on my wrist here. And that's what I love about going to MAC and having my foundation match to my skin tone. You really don't see it when you apply it and usually I'd go to like Superdrug or wherever, pick out my own shade and always get it wrong. So it's, it's nice to just go somewhere else and have them pick out your shade and it's a really good coverage foundation. For the price I'd definitely say it's worth it. Next I'm going to be using my MAC Prep and Prime transparent finishing powder it says here apply with a brush to set foundation or on bare moisturized skin to give more give more flawless finish finish and look used for touch-ups so I'm gonna try this out a bit I'm gonna try a brush and then I'm going to use a makeup puff that I just bought in Primark for like a pound so first I've got got my brush and I'm just gonna apply it. I have used this powder before, my mum's got some and I really like it, it really mattifies your makeup. I mean you can't really see it on my wrist because my foundation is such a good match but I think I'll do another video using this product just to show you like how I'm doing my makeup on my face because my face is really quite shiny after I put my foundation on. So now I'm going to use this powder puff from Primark and put it on. I mean, looking at that, I prefer the puff to the brush. The puff gives it a lot more of a mattifying finish. I mean, I don't, I can't really show you on this camera. I do need a new camera to film with, but I haven't got any money at the moment. Right, and next for the eyeshadow palette which I actually bought in, um, the focus isn't very good on this. Um, I bought it in Lidl, actually, for 2 99 so I thought it was worth a shot. I mean, this is the inside. I'm not going to use the brush that came with it, I never use the brushes that come with my palettes, so. But, um, and you get this little card which basically shows you how to do a smoky eye with it. But um, yeah, I think I'll do that another day. I'm just really testing the colours to see if they actually work and how well they work. Right, I'm just going to grab an eyeshadow brush. So first I'm going to go in with this shade here, which they're calling um, this one here. They're using it white, calling it white sparkle. So already I've got quite a bit of powder on the brush. It came off really well on the brush just then. Let's see how well it applies. Yeah, it's really that's amazing. For a little product, you wouldn't expect again you can't see it, it's too pale. But um you can see it like just here. That's a really good colour. Really like that one actually. I'm really enjoying these colours actually, I might have to go back. They've got another palette in there 
called, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's Bright Eyes. I think I'm going to go back for that one. And now I'm going to go in with this one here, which is Black Pearl. Yeah, I really, really like this palette actually. Sort of like, you got two pale shades, two purple shades, and two black slash grey shades. But yeah, I was not expecting that from this product. I mean, if you like smoky eyes and you want to, well, you need instructions really, I'm not very good at the smoky eye. But um, yeah, I definitely suggest you get down to a little quickly before they sell out, they didn't have very many left, I went to the one in Southampton City Centre and they didn't have any, they had like a few left so yeah I'd suggest you get yourself down to Lidl for that product. Right before I take my makeup off I'm going to try out this shower cap from Soap and Glory. I've always had trouble with um, shower caps fitting over my hair because I've got afro hair so I decided I'd go and buy this one. This was £6.25 in boots. It's quite nice and silky. It smells new. I love it. I'm just going to put this on and see if it will fit over my ponytail first of all. It fits my head really well. Usually I buy shower caps in um, Primark and they're too small for my hair. I think most things are too small for my hair to be honest. Right, now I'm going to take this ponytail out and see if I can get it over on my hair without a ponytail in. Fluff it out a bit. I need to wash my hair tonight. Yeah. So let's I'm put it on again. Tuck my hair into it. Without just took my earring out, brilliant. I actually love this shower cap. It fits my head perfectly. It's actually a little bit thick for my head, so I hope even when I've got my hair all curly after setting it, it's still going to work. I love it. That is definitely worth the money I've paid for it, and hopefully it lasts quite a while because I don't want to have to buy a new shower cap within the next year now. And on here, on the box, it says on the back got like a little um, suggestion on the back here and it says, um, I can't pronounce that name, Saskia who works at Soap and Glory headquarters has possibly the glossiest hair we've ever seen. Swears by a once a week deep conditioning treatment using warm olive oil and a handful of our Glad Hair Day conditioner and wrapping her, her head in a shower cap for 20 minutes before rinsing. Can we just say, if you could see her hair, you might want to be her hair. So I might try that. I haven't ever bought a Soap and Glory like actual product before, so I might try that when I get some money next month. But it says here, um, care instructions, rinse your shower cap inside and out after use, then allow to drip dry. So. Yeah, well, I suppose as long as you look after it, it's going to last quite a while. I love that. Right, next I've had to go out and buy a new bath path because mine's getting a bit bare now and, like, I just feel like they get a bit dirty after a while. I don't, I don't really like to use them for more than three months. So this one cost me £3.50 and, I mean, it's, it's really thick, like, that's me squeezing as hard as I can on it. My hands are shaking, I'm squeezing so hard. But yeah, and it's pink, I love pink. I think this one's going to last me quite a while. Um, I mean, I usually soak my bath puffs in Dettol once a week, so 
As long as I keep it clean, it should last quite a while. Um, yeah, and on the tag here it says, um, two scrubbers in one. After a lot of use, this shower path will probably unravel in the middle. If it does, tie knots in either end and employ it as a back scrubber instead. So even when it's gone down a bit, you could use it for something else, which is good. Because I don't really like to throw these things away. I don't. Well, I don't know if they're recyclable, but I just don't like throwing them away because the environment and all that. Right, the next product I'm going to try is this Seacrest Facial Cleansing Milk for all skin types. Um, they have a stall in the middle of West Quay and uh, they like to pester people to um, buy their products. Uh, I mean their products aren't really, are really quite expensive, like I wouldn't usually buy their products. But um, the guy keeps stopping me every time I'm in West Quay, he's like oh buy this, buy that and I've never got any money. So today I was like, I've literally got a tenner to my name. So he sold me this for £10. And on the chart, apparently it usually sells with the toner for £50, so £10 was quite a good deal for me. I think they're closing the stall in West Quay until Christmas, which is a good thing, because I hate being pestered by people and I'm always conning to buy something. But their products really do seem quite good, but I just don't begrudge paying their prices for it. So I'm going to take some um, cotton wool double face round pads from Boots. They're usually on offer, I just buy whatever. I'm going to take the lid off and I suppose you just squeeze it onto the pad. And now I'm going to start with my eye makeup and see how well this comes off. Because they claim their products are better than anyone else's, but I'm not sure how true that is. I don't really use cleansing milk very often. I usually use a hot cloth cleanser or just face wipes and then wash my face. Got a little bit of it in my eye. Yeah. Pretty much all my makeup's just come off. Even my mascara's actually come off my face. I'm going to go in with the other side of this and just make sure. I've got all this eye makeup underneath my eye now as well. I mean, they, they say that this is, like, you can use it even when you're not wearing makeup. But I, I still like to wash my face in the evenings just so I know I've got face, like a properly clean face. I just like to go in and scrub my face really. But I, to be honest, I don't really feel like my face is very clean. The guy said that this stuff kind of cleans your face from the inside out. It gets deep down into your pores and then pulls any dirt out of your pores. But um, I'm not sure how true that is. Right, my camera automatically stopped then. I don't know why. I went to Smashbox earlier and had my eyebrows done and my contours using their contouring powders. So that's probably why I've got quite a bit of makeup on. Because I tested so many different things today and I would have bought the Smashbox products if I had the money.
doesn't feel clean at all. Feels like I've doused it in moisturiser and I can smell the product on my face and I just like my face to feel clean and dry. Like this feels moisturised. And I only like that feeling when I've actually put the moisturiser on my face myself. I've not used a cleanser. My brother's just started playing his music and great. But yeah, that was all the products that I wanted to review for you today. So that is MAC Studio Fix Fluid Foundation, which is a must in my makeup bag. I actually can't live without it. Uh, oh, right. My MAC Prep and Prime Powder Trans... What's it called? Transparent Finishing Powder which I love, I mean my mum had it, I'd used my mum's one before I'd gone out and bought this one and it, um, I put it on, just a small amount with like, with, um, this brush, so it's quite a big brush and um, yeah it stayed on all day and I honestly thought powder was powder, it doesn't matter where it comes from but this one stayed all day and I mean even if it doesn't it's small enough to carry in your bag to touch up it's got a little mirror in it which I love and I'm pretty sure my puff my powder puff fits in there perfectly so I don't even have to carry this around separately I can just put it in there and use it as a wet so love it that was 20 20 pound 50 my mum told me it was £15.50 and totally lied to me, but again, I still think it's worth it. That's going to last me a long time, I think. You need very, very small amounts of it. Uh, this eyeshadow palette, it's called a look in a box, but um, I love it. I honestly did not expect that from a £2.99 product that I bought in Lidl, honestly. Um, I'm going to go and get the Bright Eye palette, I'm gonna, probably going to go to a bigger little store and see if they've got more palettes, they might have more than just the two, but for 2 pounds I'm going to stock up, I think I'm going to buy everyone one for Christmas. Um, my amazing shower cap, just so you know on the front it says um, one for cover. And it's got a little brown bow on it. I love this. Absolutely love it. It was definitely worth the £6.25 I paid. My, it's got a shower puff, not a bath puff. I always call it bath puffs. But £3.99, worth it. I think it's definitely going for quality rather than like the cheapness of it. Like most of the ones I buy. Up until now, I've always paid like something stupid like a pound for a bath puff and it's lasted me a matter of about three months before just falling apart and but this one I think it's definitely going to last a while um and what else was there oh yeah the Seacrest facial cleansing milk but honestly it's a good product my face is clean it's starting to feel a little bit cleaner now it's starting to look a lot cleaner now but to be honest, I would not pay £50 for this and a toner. I think it's extortionate, to be honest. And they cut they no, yeah, it's paraben free and it's allergy tested, so but just it's not worth it. I mean it says here enriched with vitamin, vitamins from the Dead Sea, grape and sesame oil, sea crest facial cleansing milk is designed to help clean the skin of dirt and makeup and leaving it, leaving it soft and ready to absorb moisture and nutrients. It says to use morning and evening on your face and neck. But honestly, I could probably find a product that does pretty much the same thing for a lot less. So I think that's my next task is to go out and find a facial cleansing milk that works and is cheap. I don't want an expensive one. I don't want to pay £50 for that because at the end of the day it's a product I'm going it's, they, they were like, oh yeah, you can use it. It's 12 month use time, blah blah blah. But I think one of these would probably last me three months at most. I mean I wear makeup every day. And even on the days that I don't wear makeup, 
I still like to wash my face, clean my face and make sure there's no dirt there. But I, yeah, my next task is to find a facial cleansing milk that's cheaper than that stuff. But um, yeah, thank you for watching guys.